Considering that some rather concerning comments have been coming out of the big uh, US banks at the Barclays conference this week, I mean one was concerned about uh, the investment banking outlook, another was talking about lower NIMS, another talked about lower trading revenues, another one talked about consumer stress. Is all of this new news and how concerned should we be? Uh, we should be very concerned, I'd say. Uh, again, I, I'm trying not to paint a doom and gloom picture. But again, the fact that the U.S. and the Feds themselves, as we speak, are pushing back uh, on the Basel III endgame, as we call it, uh, should be a concern. It was actually the U.S. that started this, this global meltdown, if you recall, just 15 years ago in 2008. And we are back at that exact same juncture. And they are saying, well, 19% is too high. Uh, we will come up with a capital adequacy of 9% uh, tier one capital put aside for a buffer. And I think that's dramatically low. But they call themselves very robust right now, but they're anything but that. So it is a concern for sure. Right. Uh, Cyrus, why isn't the market capturing uh, the concerns around Basel III and what it could mean for the banking sector if there were to be a financial shock, you know, obviously cutting the proposed capital requirements hike to 9% from 19% earlier is a major shift, right? Uh, and can make systemic vulnerability uh, even more pronounced. But it doesn't seem to be showing up in the stock price movement of U.S. banks especially. True, true, true. Now, here's, here's the caveat that has come up. The capital adequacy rule is applicable to all banks, but the pushback is coming from the banks that are 250 billion and above, which means all four or five of the big banks in the U.S. Uh, the, the smaller banks would be compelled into adhering to that. Uh, you saw Silicon Valley Bank that, that kind of imploded just last year that took away almost 300 billion from the market. So even tier two banks are not able to sustain that, that shock that comes their way. And we've seen a couple of smaller institutions in India. We've seen a couple of smaller institutions in China buckle under the pressure. So I think this broad uh, bank of international settlement regulations that have come around saying, mm. look, if you are 100 billion and above, you're systemically vulnerable and you can bring the country down, you can bring the region down. I think it's a valid argument from BIS. Mm. Institutions that are pushing back claim that they are trading books are separate. They are mm. risk taking books are separate. Their yeah. property is separate, and so on and so forth. And I think it's just funny money, honestly. Uh, we yeah. in Blackstone actually have been monitoring that, sure. and we blow the whistle very quickly.